What's up, guys? It's just me and Shakes today. Um, the money man has a rather important meeting, I believe. So it's just going to be us uh, going over our good, bad, and ugly of the weekend and recapping where we stand. I didn't have a great weekend. I'm four from 10. Money man's five from 10. But Shakes, you seven from 10 this weekend. Is it? Yeah, you, you're up there. <laughs> yes! You know, my predictions are right. My bets must just also follow suit as well, you know? I think that's how I think that's how we're all feeling. I'm yeah, I'm down down another two hundred Rand or something from <laughs> from the weekend. This is a gradual oh, is decline, it? unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Look, Son cost me over the weekend, but uh other than that, everything came out just fine. Yeah, Aston Villa and Everton cost me two weekends in a row now. Oh, I mean, look, man, I told, I, look, that's the thing about Aston Villa, and, and I think I said this in our last, in the last one that we had, is that it just feels like the table is now, or I guess maybe the Premier League now, with after a couple of games that it's gone, now, like, things are starting to take shape now. Like, yeah. you know, I, I, you're starting to see where City is and Liverpool mm-hmm. is, and, you know, and I think Aston Villa and Everton, like, you're starting to see who they are too. Yeah. For sure, minus a few players, you know, six, seven weeks in, maybe like the true colors kind of showing. Well, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it um it helps our predictions. You're now leading the the pack. You're 35 in total, correct? I'm uh, 33 and Kev's 34. So, yeah, I'm back down to last place. Um, <laughs> aside from that, should we just get into our uh, good, bad, and ugly from the weekend? You're welcome to go first. Yeah, I know. I mean. There was there was quite a few things. Would you like for me to go first, Oliver? Go for it. Okay, let me. I'm nearly there, so I would probably would say the the good firstly has to be, and I'm gonna be a little bit biased in saying this, has to be Arsenal going away to Manchester United and winning there. I think obviously everybody knows the last time Arsenal won away to a big six side was like six years ago, five years ago. But the last time they won at Old Chadford was 2006. Sure. So this is massive. This is massive to absolutely do this. And and also it's it's how Arsenal did it too. You know, I know it's one nil, but if you watch the game, Arsenal like properly dominated that game, Oliver, you know, and I think for me, they are definitely my they definitely my my good I would uh, say my bad, though. Um, my on. bad would probably... Before, before you get into your bad, I'm impressed with the... Uh, you look at their style of play, but just they've, they've now conceded the least goals out of all the sides in the Premier League, which I found surprising because they're playing entertaining football. They're not parking the bus. They're pressing from the back, you know, but they, they were brilliant defensively against Man United and they have been actually throughout the season. So interesting dynamic there, too. <laughs> It's actually a good point you mentioned there by saying that also Arsenal currently as it stands right now have the best defense in the league. You yeah. know, I mean, that is... Arsenal have come a long way. If, you, if you're asking me, um, when will we ever say the statement have the best defense in the league? And then secondly, also say you want a way to a top six side and you want a way to Old Trafford. There's definitely uh, good things that Mikel Arteta is doing. There's, uh, there's a structure that in the way that he wants to play. And that's why it leads on to my bad, where I'm going to say my bad, funny enough, actually comes in the very same game. I'm not going to go for another game. My bad is definitely has to be Manchester United. I think purely because of they didn't look like that structure. They were outrun. They were outplayed. Um, all his substitutions came on too late. His reasonings after the game, claiming that this does happen, just, I don't know, the, just even Harry Maguire as well, it just seems so disconnected. All right, I don't know if you feel the same way, where it that, feels like... you like know, there's a culture there, you know? Uh, I don't know if you saw, um, I think it was, was Roy Keane going on about just sort of like, it's not the manager's responsibility to get a player motivated for a game, you know? He said, how can you play for your club and lack motivation? It's a huge clash. You're hosting Arsenal at Old Trafford. You haven't lost since 2006. Uh, Regardless of who your manager is, how do you not get up for that? You know, exactly. I mean, you know, I, and that's the thing. And he just looked like he looks like a guy that's got so much skill, but knows it and just isn't interested in actually making an effort. You know, it's like there's the first yeah. time, and then I'm not going to actually chase the ball. Or this guy's in the box. I'm just. He said afterwards, maybe I was a bit out of breath, and I sort of uh, 
you know, went for that challenge, not the best idea. You're a professional. I mean, how, how, do, I mean, how do you say you are out of breath? Because it doesn't make sense for me. And the thing is, I think Jamie Carragher described Paul Pogba right when he said he is a world class talent, but not a world class player. And I was like, that actually makes sense because a player also does it on the pitch and sort of performs on the pitch. And he's not been able to do that for a number of years now. And I don't know how you explain it, Oliver, to, to, to beat PSG away, to beat Red Bull Leipzig 4-1, to beat Newcastle 4-1, one, yeah. and then you come to Arsenal and you lose like that. Yeah. No, mate. I'm, I'm a little bit lost. So that's the thing with United. They, it's like they take two steps forward, but yeah. they take five back. Mm. You also talk about momentum in sport and stuff. And like this was a very important game for them to come home and win. Uh, you know, get this home win against Arsenal, who have been a good side this season. And now it's like, okay, two Champions League wins then, got this win over Arsenal. Now we're building some kind of momentum and some kind of formation. But like like you said, it's just disjointed in terms of uh, you don't really understand what's going on with the substitutions. The players don't look motivated for some reason. Um, and it's, it stands in complete contrast to the performance that they're then putting on a week before, you know? So you do wonder yeah. what's going on there. What's your ugly, though? Um, so, my ugly would, uh, has to go to... Uh, it's going to go to Aston Villa, actually. So, Aston Villa has been, for some reason recently, not being able to get the results that they need. But never mind even only that. It's also a thing of... They're conceding goals as well. They're conceding goals, and they conceded four over the weekend. The defending was kind of dreadful, and that took me back to the Aston Villa of last season. Yeah. And I can't believe I'm going I can't believe I'm going to say this after seven games played and the way that they started the league. And even yeah, the way that they started the league. I'm very confident now that they will not make top four. No, I don't So know. never mind winning the league, like how they started. I just feel now not even top four is even possible. Yeah. Well I'm actually I'm gonna start with my with my um bad then. Uh, just just to go in line with what you're saying. And it's kind of threefold. It's it's Everton, Aston Villa, and Leeds. Um actually let me leave Leeds out the equation. Either they they were they were shocking, but I'll I'll let them have this sort of this, this bad weekend. I'm gonna go Everton and Aston Villa for for my bad. In terms of like they started so well, there was so much promise. Uh we kept kind of asking what's gonna happen when a few guys get injured. Do they have the team culture to sort of sustain it and stuff? And I was thinking, like, they're playing really nice football and they're not conceding a lot of goals. And maybe with one or two injuries, they'll still be holding out for one or draws, you know, not dropping points, not, like, dropping their heads. But yeah. they, Aston Villa and Everton should have bounced back from last weekend. And they didn't. They came back and Everton losing to Newcastle 2-0. Yeah. You know? Come on, Aston Villa. The fact also for me, what irritated me was if you can score two goals in three minutes in extra time you're capable of beating the side. If you can score three goals in a match and still lose, why are you losing? You know, that, that speaks something about your sort of attitude towards the fact. Um, and unfortunately, I also don't think they're going go to the, go the distance, either of the sides. Um, you know, Everton potentially for a top six, but I don't see a top four anymore for them. Um, and, it, and it is bad. Yeah. It's nice to see. It's sad too. But uh, my good has to be my, my Liverpool boys. Um, you know, a lot of chats in terms of their injuries. Uh, what's kind of happening defensively. And I read this great piece on uh, one football, it just said Liverpool showing that uh, defense is attack. And what they've done is they've just invested really well in their sort of attacking play. Um, you know, there's been solid outings from the guys that are playing at the back, but they did well to get a 2-1 win over West Ham. The West Ham haven't been an easy team to beat, you know, drew to Man City last weekend. Uh, I think who they drew, who did they drew, draw to the previous weekend? Um, three all to someone. Ooh. I can't remember who. Yeah, it was. three all. Three. Are you talking about Southampton? So, uh, I'm talking about I'm talking about um, West Ham. Well, yeah, West Ham. They do three all to, to Spurs when they make the comeback. Yeah, yeah they do three all to Spurs and one all to Man City. You know, so they haven't been an easy side to beat. So I thought Liverpool, considering the fact that they were you know, Matip's out, Pabino, Van Dijk, you know, to come out and score two goals against them, only concede the one, really good effort. But, but West Ham took the lead, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you're coming back, you know, um, which again speaks to a team culture. You talk about Aston Villa and stuff. It was like watching this, uh, you know, you've gone down, then you go down another goal, then you go down another goal. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, I think it speaks, speaks volumes of Liverpool's team culture. 
Um, my mm-hmm. ugly blow has to be Manchester United. Just like this was a must win for them. Um, you know, Arsenal still, they controlled the game, but they still won it with a penalty. You know, it wasn't like they were 2-0 up, uh, breaking down Manchester United's defense straight away, and there's no coming back from that. Like, and it, was, it was a pretty even playing field the whole time, and it's stupid, like, lackluster like lackluster play from all of them, most notably Paul Pogba for me. Uh, Harry Maguire hasn't looked good in any of the games I've watched. And I just, again, I look at Manchester United at the end of the game, you listen to the commentary and the names that they're saying, you know, <laughs> Martial, Rashford, uh, Pogba. Um, you know, you're just thinking, how are these guys not scoring goals? Like, okay, maybe, maybe could, you know, I can understand you. You're going one down, you're going two down, but you need to be scoring when you've got that kind of striking talent in your now, in- that's, that's actually a good point that you mentioned Oliver because you look at like you said the, the quality that United have with Martial, Rashford, Fernandez, Pogba, whatever and you sort of think if a better manager was there would they be playing better yeah and then it sort of like highlights all kind of social in terms of is he ready to step up to this level and he was supposed to have done something within the game against Arsenal and if you watch the overall context of it I think Arsenal were, even after the goal that was scored, Arsenal were comfortable. Like, I mean, and I'm, and I'm an Arsenal fan and I was very comfortable. I never felt like United were going to make the comeback or anything like that. And for that to happen after beating uh, Red Bull Leipzig the way that they did, it is quite puzzling. Um, and you know what's the funny thing is, Oliver, is that you'll find that they'll probably beat Istanbul on, on this yeah. week in the Champions League. But you get the sense that they're the team that's going to be putting these sort of bounce back big points over people through individual efforts. And I think that's the thing in soccer is like you can often get a bit misguided by a score. But you look at the Red Bull Leipzig game. Was it not? I think it was one all at half time, you know. And Rashford comes on and he scores three brilliant goals individually. And all of a sudden it's a Manchester United 5-1 win. You know, but yeah, that's, is it, is that's it a, a Manchester point. United 5-1 win or is it a brilliant individual effort? Um and Joe, you've, you've, you've got to ask the question, would, would a better manager be doing more with those kind of players and creating more opportunities? Um, no. So it's, a, it's an ugly situation there, you know? And I think a lot of old Manchester United legends are feeling it as well. And uh, So the one question begs to, to, surely a lot of people are asking that are probably been watching this United Friends is currently the 7 15th, six games played, only two wins only. And those two wins come from Brighton that they were lucky by. Yeah. Um, because Brighton played much better than them. And same as the Newcastle game, which was almost like actually the Red Bull Leipzig game where they scored all those goals later on in the game. So, exactly. where does United finish at the yeah. end of the season? Where, 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 where do you think they... Is the top four still possible? Or, well, or is it top we were chatting. We were chatting relegation at one stage, weren't we? <laughs> Yeah, no, true. It's a probably relegation too, and and the thing is, they're having they're having to play Everton next, and Everton have Richarlison who's going to be back. Their Dominic Clavelloon is also scoring goals as well. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. That 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 game is gonna be an interesting one for me because they both they well, I mean, we say every game is a sort of a need to win or a must win, but it's like, is this a game for Everton where they show okay, we're actually not going like down we're not going downhill we're not going completely out the picture and they come back and they beat man united or is it like a man united win that gives them this lets them hang on a little bit because that's what you you get the sense that that's what's happening is if they get two results in a row and you think maybe uh ole gonna has is gone next week you know in two weeks time and then they claw back some kind of result that's respectable and you think okay maybe they've, they've shown glimpses of something but do you think that's maybe how the whole season is going to be and there's going to be like a sixth seven place finish yeah, no, Oliver, you make a good point in terms of they could actually finish in those places if they don't get any sort of consistency. But that's the thing is that I think Ed Woodward wants Ole to stay in this job. I think he wants to give him the time. The only thing is that the, the, the result as well, and it's the manner of the result as well. It's it's just yeah. how they lost to Arsenal. It wasn't, yeah, it's how they lost to Arsenal as well. And I think... I think they could. There is a potential that they won't make top four this season. There is that potential for sure. Yeah, I mean, look, I think Spurs are just building great momentum. Um, I do think they've frustrated me in that they're slightly, they're a bit sloppy. Like Spurs have been getting the lead, and then you know they seem to look like really threatened in the final like 
10 or the final 20. And it's like they can't hold on to the ball and they're frantic, you know, after like going sort of 2 0 up. But I mean, Spurs have looked good. Liverpool, you called it, you said, you know, Liverpool will still win this league. City will just kind of keep going from strength to strength. I think Pep said, like, you know, this showed that we can win kind of 1 0. Uh, after this, after this recent result, um, Chelsea. I mean, with that kind of squad, they they now unbeaten in ten in ten games across all competitions. Uh, you know, for me, that's looking like the likely top four with potentially a wild card in there. So I don't see United. I don't see United being top four at the end of the season. Yeah, some dark days ahead for for United. That's for sure. Although I can tell you that. Where do you see Arsenal sitting though? Do you think they're breaking into that top four? <laughs> One, one thing I love what you said was you said there's a wild card, right? You mentioned there's Liverpool and you mentioned there's, 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 there's a wild card in the top four. Mm. And I think that wild card is going to be a teta. I think. I think it's going to be him. I'd like to see that. It would be a great, like, you know, what? what is this Arteta's first season with Arsenal? Yeah, first full season, full season. So he started last season halfway and then this is the first full one now. Look, they're they're great to watch. They seem to have a great team culture, and I think it would be really, you know, it would be really awesome to see them finish top four under his guidance. Yeah, no, it's definitely all in good time. I mean, so far so good. I think the United win is going to be massive. But now Arsenal next game is uh, they have to play Aston Villa, the the supposedly top four. I don't know what they are anymore. Um, so they have to beat them now as well. But in terms of your Ugly that you mentioned United. I definitely agree with you on that. Look, Arsenal have to follow it up now because they do have a bit of a history of like, you know, they get the sort of one or win over like a, a top six giant or whatever. And um, and then they kind of go drop a game that you think realistically you should be putting these guys away 2-1, 2-0, you know, the next week. Yeah. So uh, I, I hope for your sake and for Arteta's that they can follow it up against Aston Villa. I'll be backing them next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt, man. Look, man. Thank, thank you so much, Oliver. Thank you so much, Shakes. So we'll chat on Thursday when we do our previews for everything. Awesome. See, See you, man. Be safe.